what this killer team has in store this year. Please, welcome to the stage, CEO and founding partner of 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Christopher Stafford, creator of the LA Haunted Hayride and producer of 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Melissa Carbo, regional manager at 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Amy Holloman, director of Immersive Entertainment at 13th Floor Entertainment Group, John Braver, General Manager for the LA Haunted Hayride, Victor Matthew, Director of Special Projects at 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Brett Bertolino, and your host, award-winning actor, writer, and producer, David Dasmalchin. Kids. <laughs> yeah. Where's our people? There we all are. This is where we get to gather, isn't it? I love this. Welcome to this incredible panel. I'm so honored to get to be hosting it for 13th Floor. It's such a treat. And um, to be here amongst our people, all the good uh, boils and ghouls out there, it's really exciting to see all those horrifying faces and fangs. Uh, really excited to be here today. Thank you for having me, Chris. And I, um, I'm just so horrifyingly excited to, to, to discuss all that's to come this Halloween season in Southern California and let you know about some of the projects that I've been working on too. <laughs> but to kick things off before we uh, get into the talk, we do have a little hype video to get your blood boiling and excited and show you everything that 13th Floor has going on, which as I understand it is a lot. Chris, it is, it is a lot this year. Is there anything that you want to say to all of the monsters before this? Place? No, I just want you to thank all of you for taking a year, uh, an hour, a year, it seems like a year, <laughs> out of your uh, schedule of buying all the fun stuff downstairs and coming to listen to us talk to you. I want to thank David for agreeing to be here to moderate the panel and this team up here that has got a super busy schedule right now, and I'm, I'm happy that they've taken some time to tell you all about all the things that they've been working on this year. And I think um, the video that we're gonna see first is just a, a little touch of what we've been doing, but also about some of our other events across the country to give you an idea of what we're working on kind of nationwide. <laughs> started to take its hold on me. A ah, very special time we like to call the 1980s. I'd like to take us back to a little town that you all may know as Midnight Falls. <laughs>
who here has been to the Haunted Hay Ride? Raise your yeah. hands high and proud, yes! Wave those claws in the air, thank you, like you just don't care. The Los Angeles Haunted Hay Ride, it's an institution, it's been around for quite some time, those of us who know it and love it. Melissa, hi, how are ya? Good to see you, thanks for being here. Could you tell us just a little bit about the history and how Midnight Falls came to be? Sure. So, I don't know if anybody knows this, but it's the 15th year anniversary of the Hayride this year. 15 years, you guys. That's crazy. Um, so, everybody who clapped that they were, uh, they've been to the Haunted Hayride, how many people have had their picture in front of the pumpkin wall? Woo! I mean, have you even been to the Hayride if you haven't had your picture in front of the pumpkin wall? You know, that was like, this is a fun fact about the Hayride. I think like two or three years ago, um, the L.A. Haunted Hayride pumpkin wall was the number one most photographed thing in October on social media. <laughs> Crazy. I know. All right, I digress. All of that to say. So, you know, the L.A. Haunted Hayride started in 2009, our first year. And um, at the time, really, there were only there were only four things here. Um, there were Queen Mary, Knox, Universal, and, and then us. And it was... I mean, there were little things in, you know, the kind of the outskirts, I guess, of town, but it was a unique thing in that grouping of four, right? Like, the other things were these very big um, theme park, um, amusement park type attractions. The Haunted Hayride was this smaller, small town feeling, um, visceral thing that, you know, I tried to create because I was from a little town in New England, and I had gone on hayrides my whole childhood. And, I mean, like little hay rides that the town farmer had. We'd have, you know, hour wait around the fields of, of lines that were waiting to get into the hay ride. And I, man, I loved those things. It was, there was nothing like that in the fall and for Halloween. And when I moved to LA, there was nothing like that here. And I think I lived here for, I mean, almost 15 years before I decided we needed something like that here. But it all came because I was like, I was building these things in my front yard, these elaborate Halloween things, and I didn't know it, but there was a name for it. I was a home haunter. And yes. I had no idea what that was, like none. I just knew I liked decorating my yard. So anyway, one, one year of my home haunting, I think I counted like 1,200 people go through my yard, and I was like, there is something to this Halloween thing. I think people like it. And um, I started doing the research, and lo and behold, it was uh, it was a big a big passion point for people, and uh, like myself. And um, I just dove into the research of it all and started the LA Haunted Hayride. It wasn't as easy as that, but you know, for the sake of of the story, it was you know trying to build a world. And I think that's what the Hayride is, um, and that's you know brings us to Midnight Falls. But it was. This, this philosophy of from the moment your front tire got to our parking lot till the moment the back tire left, we would never in like a cerebral way pluck you out of our environment, right? Like ever. Like you're not gonna walk from one maze to the other and pass by like SpongeBob SquarePants or like pastel colored like dipping dots, you know? It was, all we wanted you to be thinking about was like what's coming around this next corner to annihilate me, right? And so creating that world, I think, has been, has been a, you know, the top of the priority for um, each year of the Hayride. And as we've moved into Midnight Falls, um, I, you know, Midnight Falls is exactly that. Like, we took it a step further. We created a town. Like, we have an entire town with, you know, festivals and town goers and people that each year you become more and more invested in. Like, our, our guests have equity in these townspeople from year to year to year. They go back and they're like, oh my god, remember, look at our picture from last year, homie, Herschel, like, what's up? So, you know, it's, it is, it's like taking, Midnight Falls has taken this whole LA Haunted Hayride um, ride to to that we have created a world now and um, our own town. So I can't wait till we have a zip code and you can tag Midnight Falls on Instagram. You send postcards from Chris, everywhere I go around. Can we make that happen? Yeah, we'll work on that. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it but keeps yeah. changing though. I mean, for those of us who love coming back, as you're saying, it's continued to grow. It's continued to evolve Always. over the years. What is something new for those of us who love visiting 
uh, the Hayride that we can look forward to this year? Anything new? For the, yeah, I mean, I think, are we talking about that stuff right now? Yeah, I think yeah. Victor can jump in on yeah. that. Cool. Uh, sure, so, so this year we're really focusing on upping the ante at the LA Hayride. Secrets. Uh, we've paid a lot of uh, attention to guest feedback over the years, so this year, at the Alien Haunted Hayride, we will have brand new wagons. So we've, ex we've expanded the size of them a little bit and we'll be offering seating on hay bales or benches. And uh, you know, so yeah. we've been trying, a lot of people have been asking for this over the years. So like, we're super, like... super excited. We've finally been able to make it happen. And, Massage uh, chairs? I'm sorry? Massage chairs? You know, I wish. Unfortunately not, but, you know. I'll be on the rides. Happy to give out massage. Just wait. I can't do that. Sorry. Uh, but this also means that you'll get to have a more comfortable experience on the Hayride. But don't get too comfortable because we're also introducing some brand new scenes at the Hayride this year, including some things that have never been done before. I'll leave it at that. Um, also, this year in the Hayride, we'll have uh, some of the fan favorite mazes returning, such as Midnight Mortuary and the dearly beloved Trick or Treat. And we'll have made some updates to them as well to take them to the next level and make them even more horrifying than they ever have been. Yes. Uh, we will also have some new um, food and beverage uh, vendors this year as well, including some of last year's favorites. Uh, uh, such as hot dog on a stick and uh, pig's hot dog. So if you guys love, love hot dogs, we're gonna have plenty of that for you. <laughs> Wieners all around. <laughs> and uh, brand new merch, uh, which always flies right off the shelf. So make sure you guys get plenty early, you know, uh, in the season over there so that you can claim your favorites. Victor, uh, or I don't know who wants to jump on this, there is a group of hungry fans of the Hayride out here, and we all want to know, since we're here today for this special event, are there any secrets that you would be able to share with us today? Anyone on the panel want to share a secret? So we have a, yeah, a small secret. Matter of fact, it's not so small, it's a rather big secret. We have a brand new maze <gasps> that we're going to unveil this year at the Hayride, and it is called Hellbilly Halloween. Hell yeah! Alright, the story goes a little bit like this. Venture deep into the backwoods of Midnight Falls where a long-rumored cannibalistic family has taken in the spirit of Halloween by dishing out diabolical tricks filled with uh, horrifying treats. The Jasper family has dwelled in the backwoods of Midnight Falls for generations. Although their inhumane farming techniques have long been questioned by many, Nothing compares to what happens when the spirit of Halloween takes over the household. With an assortment of family members crawling from the woodwork, the Jaspers are all dolled up in their favorite Halloween costumes and makeup. The family is gearing up for a festive Halloween night. The scrumptious treats Mama Jasper and her baby boy, Eastus, have prepared are mixed with salty sweets made from tourists who stray too far from the Halloween festival. The cousins run rampantly throughout the household, while the boys out back have opened the pig pens for some games of Chase the Wiggly. <laughs> the, the girls are playing hide and seek within the piles of chicken feathers, and, um, and, and uh, lead our tourists, our trick-and-treating tourists, deep down into the cellar, where Grampy Sarge awaits them with his rusty tools. The backcountry family is gung-ho on filling the old homestead with horrifying tricks and treats that are sure to disgust even the bravest of townsfolk, just like yourselves, in Hillbilly Halloween. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. I cannot wait for Hillbilly Halloween. Uh, one of the things that uh, the, the Hayride has that it makes that's is it is, is, is just a staple, I think, of the best haunts that any of us know and love from around the world. Is there are recurring characters often that we love to see that feel familiar to us? Are there any of uh, those that we might know are going to be returning this year? Anybody we can look forward to seeing? Any of our old friends or fiends? Maybe? So we'll definitely have uh, 
Herschel come back this year. Everybody loves Herschel. Uh, among some of the favorite townsfolk. Uh, favorite townsfolk, go ahead. This is my panel. Hey, you idiot. <laughs> Sorry, who's this? Let me jar your memory. That's it. You mean the wagons got a better response than I did, you big dummies? <laughs> It's me, the late Monty Revolta, star of the Monty Revolta Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, this is a very special event that we get to have Monty here. All the way in Long Beach. Thank you, Monty, for being here. Go oh, ahead, yeah. Stay seated. Um, I heard you mentioning something about uh, Hellbilly, Hillbilly, uh, Halloween. Well, that's this crowd. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, um, I came here because someone said that I'm accepting the big award for 15 years. Am I right? 15 years, right? I don't know anything about an award, sorry. An award must be backstage. No award. All right, well, I guess I'll deliver the big news. Here it is. I, the late Monty Revolta, star of the Monty Revolta show, will be... <clears throat> Unfortunately, returning again this year to the LA Hot Air. That's not just it, there's bigger news. And that is, this year is going to be the last year of the late Monty Revolta here at the Hayride. Oh. Ah, uh, shut up. You know, let me finish. It's going to be the last year for the late Monty Revolta at the LA Hot Air Hayride. Until next year. Yeah. To celebrate this occasion, I've uh, written a special song for all of you. And of course, you foot smellers too. Uh, you want to hear it? No yeah. judgment. You want to hear it? Yeah. I poured my heart and soul into this song. All right, uh, go ahead. Uh, the minimum wage DJ in the back, go ahead and play it. <laughs> I think, I don't know, I think that's, pretty sure that's the wrong one, but probably want to go to the next, it's going to be the next track, no, don't clap to this, it's fine, no, no, that's, that's, that's got to be the wrong one, no, I, that's already, it's a copyright, all right, sorry, sorry about that, it's the next one. No, 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 that's, uh, <laughs> that's not it. No, 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 that's, I hate you, go ahead, that's, try the next one. Try the next one. Well, that's topical, but that's certainly not it. Come on, have some respect. Play the last track. <laughs> All right, that's not the chart. Forget it. No, 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 no. Big dummy, I'll just do it myself. I'll just have to do this song, Acapulco. <laughs> Sorry about this one. Well, let me just find out. All right, screw it. I'm not gonna do an acapulco. I'll do an acapella. Here it is. <clears throat> you suck. Thank you, and we'll see you in midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, Monty Revolta. Wow. Just don't know who's going to show up on this panel today, so stay on your toes. Well, is there any last nuggets that we want to share with everyone before we move on to our next topic? Any other little tidbits we'd like to be given? You got anything else, Victor? Uh, I believe that we're also going to have some uh, axe throwing at the hit right this year. <gasps> yeah! Bring the kids! <laughs> Especially mine. <laughs> Because I'm angry with them. <laughs> I love you kids. They're out there. I love you. Oh, my best. Um, axe throwing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I uh, am so excited to be there and be looking out for me because I would love to hop in a uh, hayride with you guys and getting scared there is such a great tradition. It's just an awesome, awesome experience and I love that it continues to grow. Um, but now on 
for another subject that I'm very excited to dive into. This is an event, for those of you who are aware of it, I feel like it's growing in its visibility every year, and it's become a tradition for so many of my Halloween-loving friends and fiends out there. You know it, you love it. If you haven't experienced it yet, you have to go this year. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced. And, um, for those of you who are here and don't know about it, I don't know how that would be possible, um, but I'm so pleased to introduce Delusion. It's a one-of-a-kind interactive horror theater and its creator, John Graver. Hi, John. How are you? Uh, doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, so we get a little collage here. We just get to see some imagery. Is there a video that's going to play here, do we think? No? Okay. Well, I'll be the video. Go! Just it's test it. It's, it's fog. It's fog. Um, John, um, you're the... Uh, this is your inspiration. This is your baby. You dreamed of this up. Can you tell us um, about the concept and the inspiration behind making such a unique show, like where this came from, how this was born? Yeah, it was, it was funny. I was listening to Melissa talking about like building worlds and stuff like that. So that's you know kind of what we do with Delusion as well too. But it started in 2011 after I was working in film and television for a while, and I wanted to kind of bring that world into um, interactive theater where there wasn't really anything like it. So basically, it was taking my film friends and trans translating that into a live experience where the audience would play parts in the story, and I think a lot of you have been to it, correct? Yes? Okay, good, good, good. I want to see some new faces there as well, too, So because you never know how long these things will last. Um, but it was basically, uh, we score it, uh, Victor and I actually started this whole delusion thing back in 2011. He was the sound designer and AD, and he and I have been working on this for a long time now. And uh, now he's part of the 13th floor family, so that's exciting. Uh, and so it's basically, uh, it's, a, it's a passion project for sure, because it's a pretty intimate event. And the idea of um, having people walking through like a movie, like you're inside of it, is, uh, is pretty captivating. And it, all, it harkens back all the way to my days in Chicago, where I you know, would take over my parents' house and build the story inside of their house and kick them out and put them in a hotel room and just get all the neighbors to come in and they'd line up and walk through like a 10 minute horror play. So it kind of evolved from there into more of a professional thing. Um, and it's, it, I, really there is nothing like it. I mean, I, I, we're at this booth here and uh, people are coming up telling me, you know, they're just so excited about it. Like, I, it just feels like I'm inside of a, a story. And I just want to experience that side of things. And I was a little, I was a little bummed because I was like, I'll never experience that. Like, I'll never be on that side of things. Well, I shouldn't say never, but in terms of this project, I'm just like the fans of Delusion. I want to be that. I want to be. I want to experience this, knowing nothing about it, um, except for the the quality and the integrity of it. It's, we 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 make this a very cinematic experience as well too. So. Um, with the lighting and sound and all that stuff. So I can go on That's and on a trick though, isn't it? I mean, that's a challenge, right? So, uh, thinking about the fact that you are now a staple in the interactive world. Interactive is such an exciting experience for those of us who've been going to haunt since we were kids. We love the interactive experience, but you're taking it to another level. There's story, there's characters, there's a whole plot to be followed, and there's an, a level of intimacy with the experience that also you as producer have to consider. The, giving the audiences that experience while retaining the safety, while retaining the balance of the horror of everything that you're trying to give. Um, I know, oops, I dropped my phone because I've been taking nerd pictures because I'm up here as a fan of all this stuff, guys. <laughs> Don't mind me. Um, I am curious if you just talk for a second about that because I, I, I find that fascinating. Like, how do you manage to maintain this unique experience? How long can we expect it to continue? Uh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, first of all, I, I have a big thank you to Chris over here who um, has come to Delusion in the past and he saw, um, you know, the potential of this type of experience. It's, it, it's tough, especially in, with all the haunted houses when you get thousands of people through a night. It's tough to look at something that's like 300 people a night and say, oh, that's, that's a great business model. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, we make it work. So Chris has been integral in, the, um, in helping shepherd this into I'm getting more eyes on it. Um, I think the the way that it's been sustained so far is that people like you guys who have come to the show and just love this type of entertainment that is obviously a lot more intimate. Um, it's what we all kind of want. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably not some, anybody here that doesn't want to have more of an intimate experience. 
um, you know, balancing the business side and the throughput and all that with, um, with the storytelling is tough, especially when I'm writing the show. That's, that's pretty tough just to kind of think about like, well, I can only get so many people through, I can have this actor go this far with a group, and if, I go, if they go too far, then I gotta triple cast that actor, so it's like writing the story and balancing all those little moments is, is tough. But it's a very special thing, again, see, we've been around since 2011, and so it's, it, it has built up its notoriety over the years, more and more, and we're hoping to like turn this into, into other mediums as well too, like film, television, all that kind of stuff. So, Delusion's on its way towards... You thought like something VR random. horror was going to be cool. Trust me, there is nothing like... This is the ultimate VR. This is immersing yourself. And it's really cool for me with all my Monster Kid friends and all of us are big, you know, passionate haunters. My friend Ryan, who's at Blumhouse, and people who went this year and just kept talking about the experience they had. One of my long-term game nerd friends we play horror games with, Jillian Clare is a cast member forever. Our nanny, my kid's nanny, who we love, Carson, is one of the stars of the show now. It's like a family thing for me, too. It's so cool. But I want to talk about something really exciting really quickly, which is this year's show. Delusions known for creating captivating and fantastical worlds. Last year, we ventured into the 1970s cult world. What era will we be traveling to this year? Can you say? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's a, well, how am I going to say this? There's a few different eras, but let's say we're in the, in the 40s, in the 1940s. Ooh. And, um, but when I say different eras, you'll, you'll understand if you come to the show. Basically, this is a really exciting show, and it kind of came to me in different dreams and different thoughts as I'm kind of writing it. It's basically, the title, I don't know if we have the, the title of it up on, Bring yeah, can we bring up uh, the title? Are you guys ready to hear what the title of this year's show is going to be? Look at here. and Nightmares. Ooh. So, uh, fan of alliteration for sure. But, um, so this one basically is an amalgamation of all the delusion stories from the past brought into a very cool narrative that, uh, this underlying narrative that ties it all together. But it's an anthology of interactive short stories. So the idea is that this author has created the Delusion series. All the shows that you've seen in the past, some of you have seen it all the way back since 2011, some of you have gone just last year, the last two years, I know there's some diehards here, so you're gonna get a taste of all the delusions from the past into this show. Some of your favorite characters are coming back, some of your favorite storylines. Um, it's, it's a pretty trippy show, it's a bit like meta, when it comes to uh, how, I'm, how I'm writing this thing, and it's, uh, it's, it's caused me a lot of stress. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's funny because today at the booth, again, I see people excited about it, and I literally, they, they fuel me when I hear that stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is worth it. This is worth it. When people come out of the show, this is the worth it. The suffering so, is, pay, it pays it off. Is. Yeah. Will you be returning to the iconic Phillips Mansion this year? Yes, the Phillips yes. Mansion in Pomona. Woo! And Woo! If, you, if you've been there, you know it. It's probably one of our greatest locations. Uh, but make sure you come this year because this is our last year at that mansion. Any of the uh, characters of the past that we may be able to look forward to seeing? Characters from the past. Well, funny you should say. Uh oh. Who's it gonna be? Something. Oh, oh, oh. Wait. Not another surprise. One minute. John Cena. Be out there. Where's somebody? Where's somebody? Where's somebody? Oh. Oh. Anybody remember this guy? Don't oh, creep me out. Oh boy. Let me introduce Mr. Manny Manners. Ladies and gentlemen, Manny Manners. Can we give it up for Manny Manners, please? My, my, what a pleasure it is to be here. And look, all of the pretty Pugsleys out in the audience. My name is Manny Manners, and it's been such a lonely year. But I'm looking for some new playmates. Will any of you be my friend? Scream if you want to be buddies! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pugsleys, I have such treats in store for you. The sights, the screams. Oh yes, come fall. We're going to be best friends forever. <laughs> Thank you, Manny. Manny, are you in the, are you in the show this year? Show? What show? I do love TV, though. The little fuzzies whisper to me. Yeah. 
Oh boy. Okay, uh, that was, that was my kids have now left. Uh, they just ran out the exit. Thank you, Manny, for that. Nightmares tonight. I appreciate it. Of course. It's my pleasure. I expect to see you inside. I'll be waiting for you. Jason, stage left, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jason. Carrying Manny out. Yeah. Thank you, Manny. Pleasure to see you again. You definitely were not stiff this time around. You were great, man. It was very good. Excellent work. Excellent work. Um, so, I think Delusion looks incredible this year. I can't wait for those of you who haven't been, um, come and uh, get this experience. Obviously, a lot of diehard fans already in the house. Um, thanks, John. Thanks for creating something that's so special to so many people and for giving an amazing outlet for artists to get to create and tell stories in such a cool way. It's awesome. Uh, speaking that. of great interactive experiences, there's yet another beloved experience under the 13th floor banner that uh, I'd love to give you guys a little um, a little tease of. Can you cue that up? Can't say that. What's up, Rob? A lot of attention last year. Sheck is back for round two of Shacktoberfest. Um, last year, that fest just took Long Beach by storm, and everybody I knew in LA was coming down for it and loved it. Um, such an exciting Halloween festival. What can we expect for year two? Who wants to take this one? We got you. Okay. I'm happy to take this one, and I'm excited to talk about Shacktoberfest, especially right here in Long Beach, because that's where the event's at. So, Shaq is coming back for year two. How many people here have been to the event last year? That's really awesome. Last year was a year one event. We're excited to have an entire year to take everything that we learned, what worked last year, and areas we can improve, and bring Shaq's Oberfest back to Long Beach, back to Queen Mary. And this really is one of the more unique properties we have in our portfolio. It's a Halloween festival. And I think that's important. It's not just haunted houses or something like that. There's something for everybody at this event. It's Halloween overload. And when you know Shaquille O'Neal, we take his energy, his larger than life excitement and fun, and we meld it with all that experience that 13th Floor has with Halloween, with haunted houses. This year's event's gonna have five haunted trails. We're gonna have a ton of themed bars and lounges so you can cool down and get a drink between the scares. <laughs> We have amusement rides, we have entertainment, we have food and beverage. And if you went to the event last year, you know that it was Shacktoberfest alongside the Queen Mary. I don't know if you noticed the new updated logo, but it's now Shacktoberfest at the Queen Mary. Yes! It's a little bit of a subtle nuance, but we've expanded this event, expanded the footprint of the event, and we're going on the ship this year. Hell yeah! That is awesome. Who here is familiar with the Queen Mary, the legend of the Queen Mary, all of this? Yes, 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 yes. What experiences then do we get to expect being actually, we get to actually go on board? Yes? Okay, and then I've heard that the ship, well, we know this. I haven't heard this. I know for a fact the ship is haunted and it has haunted guest rooms. Are people actually going to be able to book and stay on board? That is correct. Yes! Yeah. So first of all, right now, there are rooms you can, it might be sold out this weekend because of all of you spooky kids out here. Yeah. Um, but you can go back onto Queen Mary and it really warms our creepy hearts to say that. So uh, you can come to Shacktoberfest and you can extend your night by staying on the hotel and uh, creep around in those hallways and see what you might see or hear. And I hate sitting, okay. So, <laughs> Brett mentioned that there, we are going on the ship. There will be a secret VIP experience inside the ship, but also 
Last year at Shack, it was scary. It was family friendly. The event is getting darker. Yes. And we're anchoring the event with a brand new large attraction inside of the ship. Yeah. So, while many of us know about the Queen Mary, I'll tell you just a little bit. The RMS Queen Mary sailed the sea from the 1930s to the 1960s. Designed as a luxury cruise liner where first class guests could enjoy bars and restaurants. This was the ship that still to this day has the record of carrying the most people aboard at one time at 16,000 people. Just think about the energy that was on that boat, the amount of souls that were swirling around in the ship. The ship also, during World War II, carried troops across the ocean. But if you look across the water right now, you'll see the Queen Mary painted blue, white, and red. But in order to be at battle, it had to be painted battleship gray. And when looking out in the mist, you could not even find her. And that's when she was named the Grey Ghost. For years, it's parked in the late 1970s here in Long Beach and continued to be a hotel and attraction. And for the past few years, she's been waiting. And the souls that have perished there are becoming louder and stronger than ever. So for the first time in a long time, we're inviting you back into the belly of the ship. Please come and step inside the Grey Ghost. Yes! So all this amazing new stuff is happening, but what if, for those of us who loved last year's experience, what are the elements that are coming back that we loved from last year? That's a great question. Lots of things from last year are coming back, but I think pretty much everything at this event this year is going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit better. So Amy just told you about the Grey Ghost, our new uh, trail on the ship. It's the longest haunted trail at the event. All four other haunted trails are getting new scares, new elements added to them. Uh, over on our block party area, which is in the middle of the event, it's the big party. Uh, lots of energy, lots of fun. We have a brand new stage, and I'm happy to announce that Lovecraft is once again coming back to headline that stage, and there will be a familiar face at the event, Skeleton Sam. I see the back coming in. Give it up for Lovecraft! Ladies and gentlemen! I am Skeleton Lovecraft. Sam, hype man at the black party. In the flesh, or lack of flesh, right here, on stage. How excited are you for the party, Lovecraft? So excited? Who wants to party with Lovecraft? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's truly rock and roll right there. That is. Now, aside from Lovecraft, I think everybody wanted to know, I wanted to know as well, is Shaq actually going to be there this year? That's right. Shaq what? is coming back to Long yes. So if you were there when he was there last year, um, it's really awesome just to see him excited to interact with all the fans. He shot some of our severed heads into the dead head hoops, uh, got to go through the trails, got a few scares, and I think our actors, like you can see pictures, really love working with him. And he's so cool, he's in front of the entry tunnel where there's inflatable him above him. And he's like, let's, let's shoot this shot again with more energy, and the 30 actors loaded in this tunnel were so pumped and he was in the back and they all ran out and they're darting at the camera darting and then shot comes out after Rawr! and he's just so great to work with so he'll definitely be back this year we can't announce exactly what night he does have a very busy schedule um, but we're excited he'll be awesome back. awesome fantastic congratulations you guys it's been an amazing event and now that's a new tradition to come uh, I'm sure, like myself, everyone here is excited to see all that's to come at Shacktoberfest and to explore the Queen Mary, this totally new experience that's so cool. Um, I would like to make a little transition now. Lastly, certainly not leastly, 
That's a word, isn't it? I wanted to talk about highly anticipated announcement of a new show. Chris, what's coming to LA this year? We are super pleased to bring our Magic of the Jack-O-Lantern show yes. to Los Angeles this year. Yes! What is Magic of the Jack-O-Lanterns for those who don't know, please? Yeah. So this show started a couple years ago uh, in Denver, which is where our, our home offices are. And uh, it's basically Halloween embodied. It's a giant display of lit pumpkins, but in addition to that, there's all kinds of other kind of, you know, I hate to use the word buzz, immersive, but immersive art installations along with it. And it's really an event for everybody. You know, everything we do is a little bit scary, but this event is not at all scary. It's actually just spooky, creepy fun. And uh, so it's for everybody. It's for everyone. I mean, we get people from, you know, little, little kids up to grandparents. Because I've got two little ones, and God love, I would be amazed if I, I can't wait till I can take them to Delusion or the Hong Hay Ride, where it's still a couple years from there. Yep. Uh, but this is something that I could bring the, the whole gang to? 100%, yeah. Nothing scary here, just all about Halloween fun. Uh, nice night out, enjoy some food and beverage, you know, some cocktails, and... Uh, enjoy all of the scenery. And do you know where it's happening yet in LA? Yep. It's going to be at Whittier Narrows, if you're familiar with that. So uh, not too far away and in, in a good central location. And actually, uh, Amy was instrumental in launching Magic of the Jack Lanterns in Denver. We, uh, we had done some similar uh, events on the East Coast, and uh, those were shut down uh, for COVID. And we used that time to really just kind of reimagine what Magic of the Jack Lanterns could be. Um, kind of take all of the guest feedback and improve on um, the things that they wanted. And uh, yeah, it's been an, it's been an awesome show. This is the gorgeous guests stuff loving. too. I mean, if anybody's watching the screen right now, I I live for this. I love it. I don't know if anyone. Uh, it's a fan of, you know, Corin Hardy, the filmmaker, he did The Nun, he's done a lot of great movies. He's one of these jack-o'-lantern enthusiasts that carves a different, you know, piece of art, or four of them a day over the month of October, and I live for this stuff. I think it's so beautiful. Um, when we go, how long is this, like, is this an event where we just do a walkthrough? Is it something, like, how long do we expect to stay when we go? Yeah, it's, it's a consistent loop, you cool. know, that, that you walk. If you keep walking the path, you know, you're going to, you know, circle around and come back. Um, most of our guests are on site around hour and a half, you know, cool. that they'll, they'll spend on site. Like That's our sweet spot, just saying, for my, they expire. My kids are yes. like, they turn into pumpkins yeah. after an hour no, and that, <laughs> who throw things at me. No, very, very, very intentional. We know, you know, early in the evening we get a lot of families there and, and cool. make sure they can experience everything. And then later at night, you know, we get some of the kind old of romantic, right? too, for those of us goth kids that want a great little, day uh, night romantic for stroll. Yeah. Smooch by the jack o' lanterns. I'm into that. Uh, is there other stuff to enjoy at the event? Yeah. Want, like anything else that you do at the event? Uh, yeah. Well, I think what's really neat is every scene kind of, there's different themes. So you guys are seeing images of different pumpkins, which we've had some expert car artists from around the country carve. And we currently have uh, some LA carvers carving some fresh pumpkins for this market, which I'm really excited about. And, um, that's very cool. Uh, there's different scenes and sort of themes in every area. So if you're walking through the under the sea area, there might be bubbles that are going around you. It's sort of what Chris says to speak to the immersion of it. Or if you're going past the broken down pirate ship that is built out of pumpkins, um, you might see a fog cannon shoot. You know, I think it's a lot more than just seeing sort of static pumpkins, and there's thousands of them. Um, but guests will be able to buy cocktails, which is great both for parents or for date night, which is night out, ghouls night out, whatever you like to call it. Yes! So, pumpkin themed cocktails, pumpkin beer, we try to keep on theme with pumpkin if that's not clear. Um, maybe pumpkin spice lattes. Um, then there's also some really cool uh, light show components in addition to the pumpkins that our tech team has been working on this year. And um, I think this, the spirit in this venue at Winnier Narrows, you know, you have the trees, you have the big ponds of water, and kind of like what Melissa said, going back to um, Halloween, like in a New England energy, you get that feeling when you walk through this event. So, um, but it's not scary, like the hayride, okay? So I think uh, it'll be really a treat. Um, 
for all different types of people. We're excited. Amazing. I would also just want to add, this is not the event to miss this year. Like, this is an aesthetic wonderland. And this, I think this will actually be a huge, once people start going and this, and people's opinions of it start getting out, I think this is going to be a massive event in LA. Um, I think this is probably going to be like the event, the Halloween event of LA. It's gorgeous. Awesome. Oh, and I'll add one more thing. This is the kind of event, as a haunter who works at scary haunted houses, this is the kind of event I like to go to if I get a night off in October. Because, like Melissa said, it's soothing um, and it's still fun. And there are drinks there, there drinks. too. That's part of it. <laughs> um, well, we're, we're getting close to the midnight hour, wrapping up this panel. Everybody's been amazing. I just want to know really quick, Chris, why can I ask, uh, maybe this is a... I don't know, I think it's an interesting question because Los Angeles does have so many events. Why did you choose LA as well to bring the, this experience? Yeah, really just because, you know, we have such a different offering of events here between Hayride and, and Shacktoberfest and Delusion. It just seemed like offering something that was absolutely for everyone. You know, I talked a little bit about Shacktoberfest last year where it's kind of a choose your own adventure. I mean, you don't need to get scared if you go to Shacktoberfest, you can still enjoy the festival, but there are still the scary elements there and the, the haunted trails. And this event is purely for everyone. And it, it also, like I said earlier, I feel like it just embodies Halloween and the spirit of Halloween. And I love it was that. a good addition for, for you folks here that love Halloween. Halloween uh, Monster Kids, it's about community, am I right? It's a place where as scared as we get, as much as you can scare the hell out of us, every person here belongs Every single one of you belongs. I don't care where you're from, I don't care your belief system, I don't care who you sleep with, you belong as a monster kid. I love you, you're all loved, you're all safe here. And one of the things that's really special about what you guys do with your shows, bringing communities together in a place where we can get the hell scared out of us or have a beautiful, artistically inspiring evening, um, is that everyone Every single person belongs. No one's turned away at the door. Every one of you, uh, this is our safe space to come together and, uh, you know, get to be as creepy as we want to be. And I got to tell you one more thing as somebody who's currently uh, an actor and, and writer and creator on Strike, AI will never replace what these guys are doing. This is what it's all about. And we know this, and it's so important, and I'm so honored to get to be up here. I now have a whole new row of monster friends. Uh, I am so grateful for that. It's so important to me, and always has been. I always felt like an outsider, and I didn't belong until I started to really get ingrained into the community, and it means so much to me to get to be here today celebrating with you. I have friends and fiends all over the floor, it turns out, which is wonderful. I think... Um, that this show is an incredible show. I'm excited to come back in years to come, but my dear friends, the Boulets are out there. I want you to go say hi to them. My friend Vamp is here. We've got, and speaking of friends, I'm gonna uh, pump my own stuff for one second. Incredible friends. Who here likes masks? Anybody buys or collects masks? Have you ever heard of one of the best silicone mask creators in the world called Immortal Masks? Yeah! I mean, they provide masks for some of the best haunts in the world. Well, I personally write uh, a comic book for Dark Horse called Count Crowley. She was a reluctant Midnight Monster Hunter, now she's an amateur Midnight Monster Hunter. I'm gonna give some of these away with our giveaways in a second, but my hero Jerry is a horror host who actually haunts monster, uh, hunts monsters. And the incredible folks, my friend George, if you're out there, raise your hand. George, co-owner of Immortal Masks. Monster kid at heart. I've known George for over 12 years. They're putting out a line of Count Crowley officially licensed masks this year, and I'm so proud to be here. I could cry. We've got a Count Crowley mask, so anyone who wants to get in the spirit, if you don't even know who Count Crowley is, I think she's a pretty badass ghoul, no matter what. Um, so uh, coming next, our next mask is going to be Hubert the Vampire. We don't have the mask ready yet, it'll be very soon, but this is the model for Hubert. And um, as you know, those are some of the best artists at that, and I'm excited to, I can't give you the mask away today because it's the first one, but I'm gonna give away a signed poster and a, a, a graphic novel of Count Crowley. Um, Chris, anybody else on the panel? Uh, oh, and I just wanna say, again, because I'm on strike, I can't talk about other things that I'm working on, but it's all good, fun, spooky stuff. Um, 
Anything else you want to share as we're gearing up for Halloween season? Thank you, you no, we, we appreciate you guys coming to listen to us, and uh, every year we're not above bribing you in order to do that. So we're definitely going to do some giveaways here. And, uh, oh, yeah. The giveaways. Who's here for the giveaways? Let's be honest. We want some free stuff. Right? Um, well, thank you for attending this year's panel with 13th Floor Entertainment Group. Before you go, some of the prizes. Um, do you do a ticket giveaway every year, correct? There's a do. ticket giveaway for, yes. So get your phones out. Get your phones out. Get ready for your free tickets. Go ahead and, and text these words to the corresponding number. Choose, real, real quick guys, choose the one you want to go to because you can only choose one. But text to it. So and, don't text uh, to both. Don't text uh, to both. You text to the one. So choose you the one you to. want your ticket to and then send a text to it to make sure you can, and then you have to hit yes to sign up. And then you get your, right, you get your free ticket. Um, so pick if you want your free ticket to Shacktoberfest or Haunted Hayride. And then in addition to That's very generous of you guys, by the way. How about a round of applause for 13th floor? Everybody here gets a ticket. That's and pretty awesome. a round of applause. We have a lot of shows out here. And I just want to shout out to our cast and crews. Yeah, we yeah. our shows possible. So shout out to all of you guys. If you've worked on a 13th floor production in your house, will you raise your hand so we can say hi to you? Yes, give a hand for that guy. And that one, everybody here. Yeah, I want, I want to add to that. You know, it takes a, an army to create these shows. And so I just want to acknowledge just just like we did for our casting crew, you know. So uh, they, they work really hard and uh, just wanted to mention and give them a shout out. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, now, if you've done your text, we also have a raffle drawing. Do you have your raffle tickets? Who's got their raffle tickets? Everybody have the raffle tickets. Okay. First up, first up for the raffle drawing, we have a pair of VIP tickets to Delusion. Oh, yes. Ready? And I'm going to read the number. I just took the number, I took the ticket right off the top. I'll dig in next time and get another one. The number is, drum roll please, zero, seven, nine, three, one, eight, four. <laughs> Look at awesome. Halloween yeah. Holiday. Halloween oh, Holiday. For it. Can we see your ticket? All right, and then uh, we've got zero, seven, nine, three, a wiener. Congratulations! Can we give the two VIP tickets? Hey, this might be a to the Halloween might, know me. David, this might be a good time to tell what are you actually gonna do for the VIP? We should play yes, that for your VIP quick. experience. What do they get? This, tell this us. your show, our, our trademark is sort of play your part, right? So we're gonna try something different this year with VIP, which I highly recommend. We'll see how this goes. But you get to venture into the back house and be a part of the show itself. So uh, I would highly recommend you you go for that VIP. It's not just uh, you will be covered with swag. Blood. You're actually gonna be a part of it. You can see a little backstage area and um, and literally play your part. So that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Next up, we have four a four pack of tickets to the brand new Magic of the Jack o' Lanterns event coming this fall. And the number is zero seven nine. Three, one, nine, seven. seven. Yes, there she is! Congratulations! Come on down! Here, can I give you this? There's your ticket. You can cross reference that and make sure. Oh, we've got a Nightmare Before Christmas fan in the house. All right, and last, this is the last giveaway we've got. All right, yep. I've got a. Um, I've got the graphic novel for volume two of Count Crowley with amazing art by Lucas Kettner. He is the Bernie Wrightson of our generation, I swear. And I've got a signed poster. And I've got a couple more posters. I'll be walking around on the floor in a bit. Uh, if you want one, uh, come and find me and, I don't know, tell me which of these events you're going to be going to this year. So the winner of the Count Crowley prize pack is number 079319789. Hey! Step right up. This was a very...